everything's going. All right guys, welcome to another video. Today we have a question from an awesome photographer named Kate. Kate uh, is a member of the Omula group and asked some questions to me and I'm more than happy to answer them. So today she shot a wedding. It was a backyard wedding. And these photos look incredible. The skin tones are good. Uh, she tells an awesome story and we're gonna dive into it. But there's something that you guys are gonna go into when you're shooting weddings and that is where's the sun positioning during the ceremony and you're gonna not have control a lot of the time for the literal ceremony part and her question was Jeremy there's a sun glare behind all my photos what can I do to combat them so first let's look at her screen let's look at her awesome photos so she starts the photo shoot here's the gallery she sent me in um, awesome photos of them holding hands and you can really tell that beautiful sun's coming in from behind. Now this is a blessing, but can also not be a blessing. It depends on the vibe you're going for. And for this first kiss, it's beautiful. I got the nice sun glare coming in and I actually like that style. Um, but what I'm gonna show you in a couple of seconds is what I would have done to utilize both the pros and the cons of having that sun behind. Now we're gonna look at her raw files. Now, as a reminder, Raw files can actually, it can be like having your pants pulled down. Um, don't judge her photos by raw files. She, she's an awesome photographer. That's why I'm showing you her great work before. Uh, so I'm gonna go into Lightroom here and we're gonna go dive into how we can edit, how I would kind of look at the colors and play with the curves and kind of play with everything so you guys can see um, how to combat that. So for setting wise, I would actually be shooting on probably a 35 millimeter and add back up. Uh, I think one thing she missed was telling the full story of, you know, what's the house that they're getting married at, the, the pathway leading up to the backyard, a full wide shot of the entire backyard, and then people arriving, and then they're, they're coming up that, the aisle, and it kind of just dives into the story of them holding hands. You're kind of missing out on the entire story. So maybe that's one opportunity Kate could have uh, explored, and who knows if she showed up at the, the time of three o'clock or six o'clock to the ceremony and they're already into it and they weren't waiting for her. So uh, that's just one idea. So now diving in, what I would have done if I were her, I really like this one shot of them two holding hands. I really like this shot. Kind of tells more of the full story, kind of more of what I was asking for. But when it comes for the sun glare, there's two things you can do. Imagine you're out on a sunny day and you hold your hand in front of your eyes to block. And then if you slowly raise your hand above your eyes, then you see the sun glare come in. Now, both having the sun glare just under your, your hand, glaring into your eyes, that's a cool look, but also uh, when it, the sun's behind your hand, it glows around your hand. So I actually do both in my photography and I wish she, she utilized that. If she, if their heads are right here and she put the sun behind their two heads and then had the lens flare coming to the left and then scratched down in the shade of being having the sun behind them. You kind of look like a monkey going back and forth, but the photos are beautiful. And then you utilize both, uh, both ways you can light the photo. Uh, but she did a good job. Sometimes it's hard to focus on them when the sun's glaring. So she, sometimes I hold the focus when the, the sun's behind them and then I come out around and shoot around and then I let go of holding focus. So let's go dive into her photos. So I'm gonna be editing this one first, um, just because, so we're gonna look at her settings. Okay, you're not a photographer, I'm not throwing shade, but we're gonna see, okay, great. So you shot at LOS ISO, that's awesome. Um, you're using it at the 25 millimeter focal length, so I'm assuming it's an 18 to 55 kit lens. Um, shutter speed's good, f stop's good. So everything was good. Um, your focus is pretty much spot on. Um, I would have done was exposed a little bit more for the sky. So if we bring down our highlights, you can see that we lost some details in the sky. Maybe it was a no cloudy, uh, no clouds in the sky and the sun is right there. So that's okay. So I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit, bring down the highlights to 60-ish. Um, gonna bring up the, the shadows as much as I can without like uh, getting too much black clipping. Um, see, if she only knelt down a little bit more and had the sun literally behind the groom's head and if she would have centered up so that the perspective of the wood was centered to her instead of shooting on this angle um, and lowered her body position, her camera position that we talk a lot about on this channel. Um, I think that would have really helped uh, this photo, but 
All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna warm up the photo just a tad, uh, because if there's gonna be sun, we're, you know, we're gonna lean into it. I always like adding a little bit of magenta in my photos, um, a little bit of texture. I actually put negative clarity and a little bit of decays. I like negative clarity, it just kind of smoothens out the skin tones in my opinion. I am no expert. There's kind of two ways you can do vibrance and saturation. You can either uh, bring down your vibrance to bring up your saturation if you like the balance between the two. Um, I'm kind of a bring the vibrance up, bring the saturation saturation down type of guy and then custom do my, my HSL myself. All right, so right now here's before, after. Okay, let's go back, I lost the photo. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring up the midtones because we want details um, in there, in, this, in the midtones there. I'm gonna bring down the shadows actually to create that contrast. I don't want too much punchy contrast, but I want enough contrast. And then I'm gonna actually bring down the whites because I don't wanna, if I bring them up and make them brighter, it's like it adds a sharp contrast so you can see where the highlights are clipping there behind them. And we don't want it to be too sharp. I always like to, yeah, just kind of bring it down. It kind of mutes the photo a little bit. Um, kind of just bring down the saturation a little bit more. Looks good. All right, now uh, we're seeing some bad colors in the, the glare and we're gonna fix that right now. Um, I like to do camera calibration first. Um, so I always like to do a little bit on the primary, a little bit on, going on the red and a little bit on the, just so I can make their skin tones a little bit more yellow and real and then still get that orange and teal look. And I always bring down the green saturation a little bit just to like, I control the whole photo of that a little bit before. And I always do this before I touch um, my, my specific little turn on camera calibration. We'll level it, why not? Even though we do that manually. Um, sharpen it a little bit. Guess we can add in some orange highlights and some blue shadows. See how that looks. Looks good. All right, now we're gonna, I, I love playing with the, the luminance, um, especially because we have a lot of orange and yellow going on. We can uh, crank up the yellow a little bit, crank up the orange a little bit. Um, I always like to bring up blue a little bit because if you change with the colors too much and then someone has a blue shirt or a white shirt, it turns blue. So if you turn the blue luminance up and you brighten the color of blue only, it might fix some of your color changes. Um, and then I always bring down the blue a little bit, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose color picker so I can actually uh, play with that one specific color I wasn't liking, um, but it might just be specific. Um, okay, hue I don't really touch too much unless I have to. Um, let's look at our before and after again. It's gonna show us. Just so we can see what the true colors were of the dress and everything. So what we've done to this preset thus far is we've we've added colors in, we've kind of made it better, we've adjusted the tones, um, the highest shadows and whatnot, without being too destructive to the organic colors of the photo. Um, if you really want to save your, your details, put high up, highlights and shadows max, and then up your exposure to where there's a good balance, and then bring down your shadows, and then bring up your highlights. Like, uh, this for, the, for these photos, we're going to bring our highlights down all the way. So. Adding this photo right now is perfect to add into the mix as like your creative photo, but uh, if she sat, if she shot centered to it and then lowered, she would have had the sun behind them and then it would have been a nice halo around them without an uh, explosion of light towards them. But we're still working with this. Um, I might go with the blue curve and bring it down a little bit just to make the overall photo theme a little bit more yellow because that's, we're gonna lean into it. And then the, I'm gonna add more red in the mid, and curve. I'm gonna go up to kind of counter, just kind of balance it. Um, here's before without the curve settings. Here's with the curve settings. So this is just kind of personality. This is like totally up to your style. Um, I actually don't like the red. I added too much red. So this is totally to your style and how much you want to do in your photos and what's not. Um, yeah, um, this is very custom to literally this. Here's before. Here's the after. Now let's apply this to all the other photos and see what it looks like. So normally when I'm shooting wedding, I'll per lighting scene, I'll put one preset to kind of all of them. And then I go through and adjust the exposure only to each one. 
Well, that's a nice photo. Nice memory, good photojournalistic moment. Um, good settings. Um, yeah, uh, I think we need a little bit more contrast on this. Highlights up. So now those settings were made for when we had the aggressive light behind. So we can just put that a little bit right down. Um, there's a little, little bit of lens flare there, there, and there. You can Photoshop that out if you really don't like it. Let's go to the next one. Here's our photo. So this is our master photo. I call the master photo the photo you edit first before you edit the rest. Okay, now we're gonna bring down. Okay, so now we have a major problem. What looks good when we had back sunlit, controlling saturations, won't look good when you're shooting with the sun behind you. As you can tell, the saturation on our frame behind us is way too yellow and burnt. So, combat that. I always bring the saturation down too much, and then I go in just before everything gets too wild. And then secondary, you want your bride to look great. So I have to go more to make the bride look good. And now I'm gonna go in and turn down the luminance. It's way too bright on yellow. Um, and the saturation on yellow is way too much. So you can kind of like combat it. Um, see right now, I, that specific yellow. So what I'm doing, I'm clicking this little button and then I'm clicking the specific color I don't want. So I'm gonna bring it down, just still measure. Like you still need it in the photo. This is kind of a tough photo because she clipped the highlights. Um, I always recommend you guys to uh, expose for the highlights first because here's the before. Yeah, like we have no data in the highlights. If she exposed for the sky or exposed for that woman's face, um, even if it looked like this, but then she looked all perfect, that's okay. It might not feel good when you're taking the photos that your photo literally looks like this, but this is why we do this because now that we're editing this, it's really hard to save this photo um, within the background. Um, so I'm just gonna edit this from scratch without a preset. Um, just because we are, we do have the challenging, uh, you, you have a hard balance because you're trying to have her look great um, while still saving that. So one thing you can always do is kind of paint over her and bring down the saturation a little bit. Um, and then whatever you change the whole photo won't affect her. So that's one little tip that could work. Um, but yeah, this is overall a tough photo. Um, beautiful memory of her. I love this. Uh, great, but you also clip the nose a little bit, which is fine. But we, because we, we still have details in the nose that we can we can change. But uh, yeah, overall, a uh, tougher photo. If you expose for the highlights, that would have been great. But that's okay. That's okay. That's why we're learning. It's still a great photo. Let's go to the next one. Um, this is a great photo. Good memory. Good candid. It's a great, great photo. The candid. Um, a little off center, that's fine. You can just center that a little bit. You're more centered to them, and you lowered your perspective, um, then the sun would have been behind them. But I think why you're shooting this was actually doing what I'm talking about. You had the sun right behind them, and you wanted that really cool flare. If only you put the sun positioning right here. You moved a little bit more to your left and sat down a little bit. Um, especially for the first two photos of the first kiss, and then the next three, then go up to back to, you know, the whole scene. So, it's a great photo though. I love the memory. This is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful memory for them to cherish. So this is still our original preset, the master photo preset we made. Um, looks good. So we want things to look consistent. Um, then we'll edit the last two. Here's one right here. Aw, look at these guys. Nice photo. So now you can kind of see uh, I turned the highlights down too much. So now I'm bringing up the highlights because when it's down too much, you start to see bad uh, colors in your shirt, like a little bit of like a little bit of blue tea leaf. So if you bring it up, then it brings up the true whites um, of her outfit. Um, again, you could have put the sun behind them. And I know when you're first getting into photography, it's so much fun adding the flare um, behind. It's so much fun, but do it uh, as a tool in your arsenal not uh, as a lot of them, because it's pretty heavy in all these, but it's still like standalone great. I, th I think for this photo, yes, 100% have the flare. This looks awesome, I love the flare in this photo. Uh, and then in this one, I wish you put the sun behind the two of them, because this is like the keepsake put on the fridge. And then this is like the, the cool profile picture on Facebook or the post or the we just got married, uh, like the cool, the cool photo. 
um, that they put on the wall. That's like this is like this mom's photo, and then this is like their photo that they want to love and cherish. Uh, that's just my my two cents. Um, if you could do some other cool things and adding some filters and whatnot um, to make it look good. Uh, it's just really tough playing with these photos when we don't have the full highlight details, but we still have shadow details, which is good. But I think you did a good job overall. This is not this was not easy at all for anyone that's uh, taking photos for their, the first couple years of their life. Uh, I think you did an incredible job. Um, I like the photos. I will send you this preset for fun. Uh, there's a little bit too much saturation in this skin, a little bit. Um, so it's always good whenever you're editing a photo to click reset and see what the original was. So now I'm seeing a mistake I made was I added too much uh, probably in that S curve, I, I did my blue, if I cancel it. No, it wasn't my blue, I think it was probably in my... So whenever you see the mistake, click that and bring down the saturation. And see, now I'm bringing it back to his organic skin tone. Because he, he doesn't normally have too much orange yellowness, unless it looks natural in the scene. Um, for how much sunlight's coming in. So I might bring it back up, but then I'm gonna bring the white balance cooler to combat. Um, so and I might just bring saturation up a little bit. Yeah, so it's always, it's fun playing with those files. <laughs> it's what you normally have your workflow for on your files and how you shot it. It's a little different for others, but yeah, that's a little bit more natural and real. Um, so there you have it guys, back to her gallery. I think she she might have done a better job editing than I did, in my opinion, because she kind of knows her camera, she knows how it performs, she, her skin tones look better than mine. Um, I think she did a great job. Yeah, these look great. This is a fun candid, I love it. Um, looks good, she saved, she leaned into her highlights, that's always good. Um, I think she did a great job. She honestly did a better job at editing my photo, the photos I just did. I was just kind of seeing how I could play with it. Um, maybe a little bit more... No, the skin tones look good. If you wanted to juice up their skin tones a tiny bit more, like just a hair, that would look good. Um, you can see they're a little bit more white. Um, just a little bit more... Maybe luminance down a little bit and a little bit more saturation in the skin tones. Other than that, the highlights look good. See, now this is a good example of the sun behind them. Um, Obviously the sun's probably setting behind the houses and that's why she now has all this light. Um, yeah, thank you for sending the photos, these look great, um, appreciate it. If you guys want any of your photo shoots critiqued or you want tips and in return I'll give you the free preset that I actually create while I edit the photos and then I'll gift it to you guys. Um, <clears throat> by, by all means comment below. Uh, complimenting Kate on her awesome photos, but also uh, if you have a photo shoot you want uh, edited or helped with or having your own custom preset developed by me, I'm doing it for limited for probably like 10-ish uh, your lookers in, in the group for the first couple of people. Um, it's, if this on YouTube, join the group to be able to be eligible to ask for this. And down to help. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to build this awesome traveling fam. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. I'm Jeremy Daly. Take care.